All right, all right. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Sunderland Football Manager 2021 Road to Glory series. So we're going to be hitting in with a lot of... Yeah, I'll be hitting you guys with a lot of Sunderland episodes, Football Manager videos coming. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled on the channel. But I wanted to start the episode here. We've got a few things. We've got a few things. I played a couple games off camera, but this is something outstanding to me. Our wage expenditure is under a million and we're the lowest in the league. Like something like this, a graph like this speaks volumes. I can't. I don't know if I really took it in last season if we had the lowest or not, but hey, going into this season, you know, we're paying the least wage-wise on players than anyone in the league. And b below, below 1 million, yeah, 975k, that says a lot. That says a lot in the Premier League. I mean, if we can manage to have another, like, a top six finish again, like, that would be incredible <laughs> when you look at, like, a stat like this. Uh, so that's really interesting. And then let's just get into some transfers here. Uh, Havertz, wow, to Barcelona, 117 million. Surely Chelsea, yeah, they were going to spend with them. <laughs> we won't even get into. I'm sure when, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll explain it. Uh, you got Kimmich as well to Man United, big fee. That's just big. I that was much more. That was like double, maybe triple my transfer budget. What these teams, some of these teams, are paying for one player. That says a lot, right? So round up now, just a couple games we played and yeah, to make a Chelsea reference here, which I think here we did okay. We And Dusan, he scored. Chelsea got the penalty to kick things off and a 95th minute goal. On another day, maybe we could have snuck a 1-0, but I liked our performance and we'll explain that a little bit or yeah, the football we're playing now. <laughs> You're like, you played two games. <laughs> what did you change? Uh, we beat Crystal Ballast 2-1, though. I was very happy with that after. I was like, oh, no, not conceding first again. Turn things around. Oscar Melendo, you know, he signed at a good value. And Adam, he might have a little new role as well. I'm not going to waste any time. Let's just get into it. Into the tactics now. I have changed things up a little bit for a 4-2-3-1. You know, the style is... You know, it's, it's similar, uh, different in some aspects. We'll go through that a little bit so you guys can just see, keeping that high tempo, a uh, bit of a shorter style of passing, and we're going to play down, uh, look to overlap. Or well, yeah, we're going to look for the overlap from the fullbacks. Uh, with wide, still going to experiment with that because, you know, I've just played a couple games here, so we're not perfect. Uh, yeah, definitely. So we're still trying to play, yeah, play out of the back, and then, but still have a, you know, a faster kind of, way to our game, a faster, higher tempo, like our style. So I always like that kind of way. And I think we've got the personnel. So here we're using the offside trap still, but a much higher line of engagement and then the standard defensive line. And with the offside trap, we're not going to use any tighter marking. And of course, the extremely urgent pressing and preventing their short goalkeeper distribution. And then just simply, yeah, just, just distribute to the fullbacks and countering, counter press, counter, roll it out. Yeah, very simple there. But this is going to be an interesting one because we know how Adam, how good he was, Adam Plozek. But the thing is, attributes-wise and role suitability-wise, he's probably best as a left winger, as an inside forward. For me, yeah, like I was talking to someone and that's say where they were saying that's where they played him. They yeah, didn't imagine him as a striker, even though he could play there. Uh, so we might see that this season. We'll be interesting to see if he still has the same amount of goals, but also with Vlahovic as well, Dusan, Dusan, he is going to be the, I think he needs to be the focal point. He's that leader. He's that leader. And if we put him in comparison, yeah, Hlose, he can find, yeah, the way he was, his style as a striker as well. You can see he will be good as an inside forward. And with, with a inverted winger, I felt inside forward, he's a goal scorer. And then if we go to Melendo, even though he did score for us, he's only got eight finishing. So more often than not, I, I want to find him to be the creator, uh, hopefully finding someone like Vlahovic or Hlozek. And actually, Martinelli with the shadow striker, I think, yeah, I'm going to be training him there. He's got very suitable attributes for that. Uh, if we click there and show you shadow striker, uh, all those attributes highlighted, some of his better attributes, and I think he can really flourish for us. Uh, of course, he could not play against Arsenal, and he picked up a little little knock. Couldn't play um, the last game, but yeah, he's gonna yeah he's gonna find some good performances. I'm hoping anyway. The way I'm planning it out, it sounds good. So 
yeah, a few little... That's why, guys, I can't advance too far forward. Already, I've got so much, like, updates. A few players have gone out on loan. Let's just sort this by the date. And a few players I've saw... Actually, yeah, quite a bit of action. Denver Hume, yeah, no longer had any interest to use him. And, yeah, he was probably going to leave Nottingham Forest... Again, championship side, one million. I think he's going to provide good value. See, when I sell my players, I, I want them to do well, and I analyze where they're moving to. Oh, but Matthew Kelly, uh, Dan Neal went out like a lot. Like yeah, Deong, Dan Neal, Matthew Kelly. We sold though, hundred k, but also fifty percent of any future sale. I always try and get that for those youth guys that I'm selling out. So if he, yeah, shipping out, selling out, <laughs> it, whenever he moves, see, look at his potential. It's okay. Whenever he makes a transfer, we're going to get 50% of that. So I'm pretty happy with that deal. It was the same with all these other guys. Like Jay Turner-Cook, we were able to get a bit more from 850K. Pretty happy with that negotiation. Uh, to be fair, again, we'll have to go to transfer, see his value, around 500K. Uh, if he gets sold at any time, again, he's another guy we'll get 50% of. And the rest were just loan deals. The rest were loan deals here. So Brad Bulmer to Rochdale. Aiden, he's gone... Yeah. He's gone to Santa Clara. He's not being shipped out to another English team. He's gone to Portugal. So, yeah, the English guys, we... Well, not well, Pinto. He, he's not. He's Portuguese, but he's going to be remaining in England as well. So, yeah, some of our younger guys for the future. You know what I was touching on in the last episode? Like, this series is not going to be done in one or two more seasons. To become the best team in our country, let alone in Europe, is, is a, a lot more to it. In a way, this is almost like a start of a new save. Like, say, if you're doing a save with a newly promoted team or a team that's tend to be down the bottom in the Premier League. Yeah, you're not... <laughs> that's like, it's still a big challenge from the get-go, like, when you start up a new save. So, that's kind of where we're at now, even though we finished fifth last season. We had a very good season, but... Yeah, that's it on that. We're going to have the Europa League as we touched on Europe. We're going to have that draw soon. Another reason why I want to do episode here. So let's get into that. And just for the squad registration here to give you guys an idea, we've only got eight foreign players out of the maximum of 17. So <laughs> plenty of space there for sure. I don't think I'd want to max that out anyway. I'd still want a good balance of yeah English lads in the side. And I think we do have that. If we just confirm that for a second and we go squad. And of course, if we sort it from here and you can see England... Uh, we, we probably do need a f I've got four, mate. That's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, it's not too much. We've got a good variety, but I like the mix we do have. Like we've got two Belgium lads and then the, we got a few Italians in there. There's a, a bunch of defenders there, uh, a goalkeeper and a couple defenders. So yeah, the Spaniards, Sergio Gomez, Melendo, Manquillo, who are all part of I'd say there's almost the stuff. Sergio Gomez might rotate, but you're definitely part of the squad. So I like how we, yeah, I like how we have that kind of grouping. Oh, on that, see, football manager, man. <laughs> there's so much you can check out. Uh, the hierarchy. So our current leaders, Toby, who just joined. Sam, Gr let's not forget, Sam Greenwood has become a leader. So let's not disregard him too quickly. But let's see what kind of role he's going to play. In the team now, in the tactic now, Armini, Hayden, Kitalano. So he's another. I think we need a better left back, but we can't get one right now. Yeah, Mankilo, he's he's been good so far. And Hlozek, Gould, some of these guys are younger as well. So they're yeah, they're the ones that are kind of leading us at the moment. Our team leaders, highly influential, is yeah very important. And again, we're gonna have our eyes on this. The income. So say, remember, we've got about 75 million from now. The transfer business is all done and dusted. Now we're going to have that general kind of income. It, we're not going to have more in the expenditure from, you know, spending, like the expenditures tend to be higher in a transfer window. So yeah, it's going to be really interesting, the profit we're going to make each month. I always look forward to that when you're in a position like this in the Premier League, because generally you're always making that profit. And see, sometimes we'll have episodes like this. I'll give you some more updates of the goings on around the club and the season. Instead of just having games after games after games, it's good. Uh, Johnny Brennan, is he developing a bit of a beard there? A bit of the stubble? As he hit I, FM's got even realism in... <laughs> player faces now so uh, yeah that's why I haven't like downloaded a face pack this year because I knew something like that was tending to happen I'm pretty sure I see that anyway my main point was 1.9 million I love yeah when you can see their value just skyrocket so the update on Armini as well he's still gonna wait is that gonna remain as a promise oh he's just given himself it that's you can't do that you can't extend a promise you can't make alterations to a promise 
I'm speaking from personal experiences. He's made the promise longer. How are you allowed to do that? <laughs> Gosh. But this is what we're here for, guys. The Europa League group stage. So we can witness it live in the video. It's going to be recorded. So let's see. Where are we going down to here? We're in the third third seed. Okay. Monaco is third seed. So let's go through this. Just do it nice and quickly. And even... Yeah, through the next one. We don't really care too much about the other teams until we're going to be drawn. So kind of pick out uh, which group we would like to take part in. Uh, Lille, they're a good team. Locomotive Moscow, I think we should be able to beat them. Real Sociedad, Young Boys, B, I wouldn't mind. Atalanta, Atalanta can be a decent side. Linz will be an easy beat. So right now, I wouldn't. yeah, Group C could be okay. D, uh, we, yeah, we won't enter that because, yeah, Tottenham's there, English side. Basel and PSV, ooh, they're like... They're not superstars, but I feel they could be like super teams. How many super teams in the Europa League anyway? No, nah, so far there isn't, you know, super... Yeah, like a lot of those bigger sides are in the Champions League, it looks to be the case. So, okay, I didn't even go through them all, but that first team, we t <laughs> uh, the first group we touched on, uh, let's just draw all the rest here and we can see what the group looks like. And yeah, this 14, Jablonek, uh, Czech Republic, yeah, we should have them... I reckon, it depends what Lokomotiv Moscow are looking like these days. Their morale is not the greatest. Their team, yeah, if you if we sort by the values, oh, Zobnin, I know Roman Zobnin is a decent player, but if this guy is their highest value player, I think, yeah, they shouldn't be a worry for us. Uh, Michael Hector's in there. <laughs> Vladimir Kufal. Uh, Vladimir Kufal is there. They got some, yeah, they got some all right players. Uh, that is for sure. But if we go, oh, they have, no. How old is Vidal? No wonder his value is lower. He's old, he's 36. So, okay, don't get too excited. But he's five pace. <laughs> he's five pace. We Yeah, it's not the old Vidal. And then, yeah, Lil, uh, they're going to be an interesting one. They got, yeah, they could cause us a bit of stru... <sighs> That's just my reaction. Jonathan David, they got the two Jonathans. And they're going to cause us a lot of trouble, those two Jonathans. Just to show you how good they're looking right now, Jonathan Day. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Sometimes when you draw a team and you're looking at them, you kind of forget how good your own team is and your own good players. And you're like, oh, this is what we're coming up against. So they're going to be the hardest. And I think it'll be a fight. It'll be a fight with us and Locomotive Moscow. I, I wasn't even going to check this team because I know they're not going to have many. Yeah, the only real player they got... Thomas Chori, he's actually not the worst. He's not terrible. He's very tall, so um, strong. 13 finishing. Yeah, very good aerially. We have to look out for him. He he can score if he gets the opportunity. So that's going to be intriguing, uh, how the group stage goes. I think we can get into the knockouts. I think second at a minimum, yeah, we can get through. And just show you guys the situation with the squad registration. Sometimes for Europe, it can be a bit tricky. Who we're only going to miss out on here is Dennis uh, yeah, I had him selected, but then, yeah, I had to, or by when I did the auto select, he was one that was selected, and I think, yeah, Ryan Gould just wasn't, so we had to get him in, and Benji's going to be our starting keeper, and you might say, what if Benji gets injured? Wouldn't you want him? But Anthony Patterson, I don't think there's too much of a difference uh, between the two. Like, I think they're both not good enough, so we're just, yeah, really focusing on, well, hoping, yeah, Benji stays fit. He's been all right so far, but... Yeah, that's not something I'm too worried about because, as I said, if you compare to Dennis, he's not, you know, not that much different. Unfortunately, he doesn't go down as a yeah player of 20, 20 or younger when he is twenty years old. Uh, yeah, didn't <laughs> he didn't get the cutoff of that? Or that would be nice. Uh, yeah, he doesn't ha have the under twenty ones. Yeah, list. Yeah, he doesn't have that sign there. That's <laughs> the sign. Yeah, the description saying yeah they don't need to be registered. And yeah, he doesn't have that to make sure. Uh, yeah, this squad registration, I'm pretty happy with. I've had worse ones. I've had worse ones in FM saves, that's for sure. So let's confirm. And I just completely forgot about this one. Raphael came to me. He wanted me to sell him because he thought he wasn't going to get a work permit. I'm not sure if that's a bug, but that's literally the reason he came to me with. So... That just let me really confused because I know like I'd struggled to get a replacement for him 
as kind of like the backup left back. We signed him for a free, and yeah, this time in the season, yeah, it's it was that shouldn't have happened, man. Like, and he shouldn't he shouldn't be unhappy right now. If he was unhappy that I wasn't playing him enough, that would be fair enough. But no one was interested. In you how can is that my fault? That these teams didn't. I we got an asking price, and maybe a little bit more than your value, but like, oh, this is one of the strangest ones for me. What's got you promised to sell me? Mates, and he's the captain. Guys, this man is showing leadership abilities right now. Um, I, I didn't even make a decision. Wait, have enough? No, I offered him. You haven't been? No, they're all wrong. You haven't been offered? No, I, I did. I offered him out. No one came for him. I can't let you go. No, I know you no. I'm not going to stop you from leaving, but I'm not prepared to offer you... But I've, I have did that. My option is... Uh, I've made my decision and you're not... Guys, how can FM be like this? Where you make promises, I guess, and you do something, and that's one of the things, but you there's literally none of these I said. I'm not going to stop, but I'm not... You have to make a move happen, I guess. Put it on yourself. No, we need to discuss... I'm not going to wait. What do you want from me, man? Sold as soon as possible. But teams need to want you, mate. Oh, Okay. I'll drop this value a little bit. He might not... Okay, 4 million. So if you're thinking that's decent... Oh, like, seriously. The situation wasn't there to say one of the options. It can't be that hard, Sports Interactive. Just add an option to say where I offered you out and no teams wanted you, mate. Like, why can't I say that? Why can't that register in his brain? Register? Register in his brain. But yes, guys, we are finally getting into the game. This is a bit of off-field stuff today in this episode. Hey, like a real-life manager <laughs> has a lot to deal with and to show you guys as well uh, with the progression of stuff. So let's head into the game. The, the team is looking pretty good. We're not missing too many as well. There's just Dennis on that injury. He's almost yeah made his way back now. So, yeah, Johnny Brennan, Ruben Vargas, Raphael, Billy Gilmore could find his way in, but you got to look. Oh, it's so, it's it's a tough situation. Because I, I mentioned about Greenwood, didn't I? Kubo, there's all, there's options. But Billy Gilmore is of rank. Yeah, we I played ranks in the last game. It was actually good to get him a go. So, Gilmore, hmm. He's going to... I think we've just... Fe oh, Sergio Gomez. We're going to play him. We're we'll thinking about Gould. So this is the problem I want. Selection. Struggle. That's not a bad thing at all because players are going to... Um, you'd like to think they will anyway. Fight for their uh, position. So Hayden will make the bench. You can play right back if needed. So he got coverage there. So yeah, this is what our team is looking like with the roles and all that. It's good to, good to know all that. Uh, Alderweire Al Armini playing together. Happy with that. But what you want to see is... How we fare when we go out there. That's what we want to see. Uh, no opposition instructions have been set. That's okay. Haven't been looking to do those. So let's see. Let's see how we do. And that's what Blackburn Rovers looking like. Yeah, they got Hamas Rodriguez. So he's someone we might want to pay attention to. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, go out. I... I almost am a bit unsure about team talks when that yeah, media one isn't there as I like going about that one to be fair and does well. So yeah, we want to we want to get good early performances so we can say that. Two early owls in a couple of hard games, but now I think we can I like our lineup. I really do fitting how we're going to play and yeah. Okay. Blackburn, obviously my FM20 save. It's just, it's looking like a really interesting... Ta the table looks mad at the top, doesn't it, guys? <laughs> we'll see how it's looking after this game. But, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping... I've liked what I've seen in the first few games in this new little setup. Or I'd say adjusted setup because it's not like it completely switched around. We, we have changed a few things here or there. In a way, yes, we have changed our formation. Kitalano on our early yellow. So, guys, you reckon next season, like our next transfer budget comes in, left back is what we're going to... I clicked on that, yeah? No, it doesn't go like <laughs> fluid. 
What I mean by fluid is like the bold, like the background of it. Anyway, let's see what we do here. But I do think, yeah, left back is where we just get a next level player. I think that's that position we have not improved because I think we've liked Kitalano, but his ability, I wouldn't say is, is the same on each position uh, or com more so compared to each position more specifically. But I've always liked him. So look at that. I feel he does good work. But yeah, I wouldn't say his current ability would be the highest uh, versus our other players in the team. We'll be interested to see more people's opinions on him. I'll click on his profile again when we're done just to give a good judgment. Oh, look at this. Look. Beautiful. This is what we want to get back. See, it was really stemming from the end of last season. And I was like, oh, is this 442 still going to be operating well for us as the CPU got used to it? which definitely that happens in FM. And then the start of this season, like the first game, I knew we needed to change something. And we're just finding a lot more space now. Gabriel, new signing. Well, when he plays now. Uh, yeah, tactical changes. We just yeah took Kitalano. Uh, just, yeah, ease off tackles. But yeah, anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. Great start to this game. That's exactly what we want to be seeing. Exactly what we want to be seeing from our team. And from the changes we have made. And let's see. How are we going to build up? I always love when we build up an attack. And you guys can see it here. Plozek. Let's see how he goes on the left, yeah? And this is... He gets into a familiar position. Vlavic, man. I expected better. But consider we're taking the lead. We have taken the lead. We're going to praise the boys. And I like how we're playing at this minute. We're looking good. So Ramsdale... With the goal kick, should win this. Hey, Kitalat, I mean, he's stepping up. But I mean, versus Blackburn, I'd say, yeah, that's not, this is not a match where he'll be exposed, I guess you can say. I guess you can say. But when we come up against those really, really good teams, the wings can get exposed. Melendo, mate. Yeah, that's why I want you more in that creative role. Don't I know you're not the best finisher, even though he can score on his day. But set it up to a more clinical teammate. Plozek, maybe he got to, in our setup, in my setup, in this Sunderland setup that we did have, and technically we still have as one of the tactics, he got used to being a striker, so it's going to take time, it's going to take time to adjust, and Toby at the back just comes with a wealth of experience, it's going to be so good for us, Melendo, he looks good on the ball, doesn't he, uh, new number seven, Plozek wasted, Melen he's good touches, gets involved, Gabriel in the midfield to Vyklozek. He still... No! He still gets into dangerous positions. You can say that for sure. And, yeah. <laughs> this game, we're getting a lot of chances. This game is generally generating a whole lot. Anything going to come from this? Melendo almost winning it. But because he doesn't... Oh, we could be under pressure. Oh, we've got two back. We should cover. Mankio. Mac ah, well done. Then Melendo just clears. So defensively... Uh, responsible at the same time. We're looking good. Now it's Gomez with the corner. Oh, neat corner. I knew. Oh, my God. What an opportunity. And that was big Toby Alderweireld. Uh, big experience as well. Toby Albertine. Moritz Alderweireld. I guess that's his full name. I don't think I've seen that before. Well, there you go. Blackburn. We look so dangerous in attack in this first half. And they didn't look dangerous at all. So... Happy with the first half performance. Every single player inspired, motivated. That's exactly what you want. Oh, this is also exactly what you want. Early chance. Early chance. Get to this. No, Ramsdale. <laughs> so even if I have long throws, it doesn't mean you're going to score from them. They're always one thing. It's like you wonder if that's like a, a thing you abuse in FM or not. Like, <laughs> Or you can still score goals from, you know, long throws. Or, you know, if, if it was, we'd be scoring <laughs> a lot more of them. A lot more of them if it was something that's an exposure, I guess you can say. But anyway, <laughs> I think in FM, just when you see someone like playing FM and doing long throws, oh, it, it must be it must be something like that. Why are you doing long throws? Anyway, Kitalana, is there some kind of hack I don't know about? <laughs> Why are they doing long throws? Martinelli, oh, this is going to be good. Okay. I guess not, but Kitalano. His positioning is really, really good, but I guess that's down to the formation as well. 
Yo, why can't that be a goal with him? That was, oh, I'm glad we're seeing it in this game. I think we're taking up our passing game to another level in this setup. Uh, hopefully, yeah, you guys will see it that way as well. We're playing a bit more attractive football, and I think that's what we needed. All right, James, or oh, Harmes. He's not doing too much, so he's, he's, play, he's, play, he's playing more like a James today. But anyway, it's corner. We need to take corner as well. Gomez, you know he puts in them good corners. Melendo, oh, he's in a real good position now, Gomez. Amazing technical. Should set it up. Oh, Melendo, didn't I? Uh, his poor finishing could hurt us and waste opportunities for us. But at the same time, that's why we got him at a, a cheap fee or you know, or a better team <laughs> he was probably going to be wanting to go to. And plus being valued more. That's what you got to look for. you got to find value in your players. Uh, the good old money ball. But anyway, anyway, as we talk about all that, it's Facundo Palestri. And before we get too excited, we had all these chances. And it always happens. It always happens. Not just in FM, but in football. One team has all these chances. Chance after chance after chance. And they're not taken. Other team goes forward and scores. Oh, shock. <laughs> shock. If, oh, mate. If only. If only we could say how many times that's happened in the world. Martinelli. The world of football. But uh, Martinelli, mate. Come on. Now we're feeling here. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit of the pressure. Martinelli is not quite clicking. I feel we are going to bring on... Sergio Gomez into that position. Well, switch him to that position. He's already on. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do there. Gomez to the shadow striker in the attacking midfield position. Martinelli come off. And let's bring on Billy Gilmore. Billy, yeah, very good in that role. I'm, I'm happy with that change. Melendo doesn't look like he's going to be having one of his better games. That's the only thing. And we got on the bench Sam Greenwood. That's a big thing to bring him on or take more so Vlahovic. Big strikers. We need him to go big, really. 100%. Melendo, good fitness, but 6.9, doing better than Adam, really. But I feel like he's been our weak. Like, he's not finishing the chances. Let's try Greenwood over on that side. As you can see, he's not he's not too bad. Two and a half. <laughs> Even though we signed Kubo, is up. It's a big one. I think Sam Greenwood for this save. He's just such a familiar name. He's done so much for us. Demand more. Can we go a bit more direct now? Yeah, take the play out of defense. And let's just go more, more expressive in the style as well. Come on, lads. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. I don't know, man. I want to have faith in the tactic. Kubo. What if... <laughs> I don't even know I can make that change. Yeah. Almost... Ryan Gould for Gabriel. Ryan, deep line playmaker. Yeah, he can play as that. All right. Now, this is not a game at home we want to, you know, draw. This is a winner. This is a winner for us. But Blackburn, I mean, look how they're playing, though. Come on. Where's the winner, boys? Greenwood, someone win this. Who's going to be our hero? Who's the Sunderland hero? Come on. Gil no, don't lose the ball. He doesn't. Mankio, yes. Who is it going to be? Who's going to be the hero? Billy Gilmore. Mankio. Oh, goal. No. No. Oh. That's... I'm annoyed he took the shot. We had this great build-up, then he just blazes, man. Really? Not happy. So he intercepts there. Can he atone for his miss? Flavi. Maybe not. We're going to get another chance though. Adam, can he be the hero again? <laughs> Why are my players... That's what I hate in FM. If you don't have work ball into the box, your players shoot like you've got shoot on side on. Even though you don't have that select... Yeah, uh, high defensive line. Let's go a bit quicker. 
And those are probably the cha and those are the chances as oh my gosh, we dominated them, lads. We absolutely it's too late. You're not too I'm not gonna go through my all changes at the end of a game. Let it play out. And this was not this was just I'm disappointed because I think we played an amazing game. <sighs> XG almost three versus they barely got to point fifty. <sighs> That's tough. We weren't good enough. Sergio Gomez, Demoto. Oh, Gomez played an incredible game. I think you have to praise him off that. 7.8. I'm very happy with your performance. Yeah, he's composed after that. So we escaped the team talk pretty well. It's not what we want to see. That's why I felt like this season... Again, remember what I showed you at the start of this episode. We're paying the least for our players. We've got the lowest wage budget in the league. So in a way, you can attribute, attribute that to the worst team in the league. You know the cheapest cheapest players cheapest team in the league so it's it's going to be it's going to be a very interesting season we've got ahead of us we've got a decent you know youth setup we've got some good young players coming through and i actually like our squad i'm not saying oh we've got the worst team in the league sort by ability i know that's not versus the team in the league it's versus your own players not yeah the, it's not based on the other teams when your squad rating um yeah but I like our team, and you saw the goals, like, say goals. We scored, I feel like we scored one, more than one goal in that game. That was mad. We only got one goal in that game. It actually felt like, I know we missed a lot, but it felt like we had more than one. Like, especially with the goal we scored, I thought we had another like that. That's how funny it is. Uh, but anyway, if we're playing like this, of course, we made a lot of a lot of new signings, guys. We'll finish on that. This and they're all first team. Toby first team. Yep, Gabriel Mar Martinelli and Gabriel <laughs> Billy, James Connolly, one who's not in the first team. Melendo, he's in the first team. Aidan, no. Vandenberg, who's not really got to go yet. Vlahovic up top, first time in England. That's big. That's really big. Kubo hasn't really got a look in yet. We'll introduce him shortly. Uh, yeah, no worries. But he needs to be. A man, like last season for Verona, like I reckon to do well as a striker in the Serie A is not an easy job at all. At times can be, yeah, a lot of teams defensive. Score 18 goals in 36 in the league. That's massive. And right now he doesn't like, or he doesn't look like doing exactly the same for us. As the striker signings are very, you know, very big. And he doesn't even speak English on a basic level. So he's got a few other languages but, yeah, that could be part of it. He's going to take his time to adjust. But I like to think his quality is going to shine. So, yeah, it's early season. Not worries. I don't worry. It's just we're finding our feet. We're finding our feet, and it's going to be really interesting. Uh, if we go back to the development center, I miss club vision. I miss just this saying bored. <laughs> anyway, anyway. The Premier League says mid-table is our expectations. And remember, I'm not going to harp on it all the time, but remember when my players said, like, I was being too ambitious when I said to the players, okay, we're going to avoid relegation this season. The board wants us to... Hey, you better realise the quality we are. Mid-table, if I don't finish mid-table, like, lads, I might be out of a job. And that's on me, your performances. How about that? Uh, if you're not being ambitious enough. Anyway... Hopefully, we can start to turn things around. Like, I think, what do you guys think? Is our team stronger than last season? Please say yes. I like to think I improve my team year on year. But also, the other question is, have other teams gotten stronger? If we go back to ours being, you know, the cheapest wage, you know, wage budget, not wage budget, but a wage expenditure in the whole league, maybe other teams have just really, really improved. Yeah, improved. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think anyway. Enjoy this episode covering a bit more uh, off-field stuff. It's always, yeah, enjoyable. That's what I love about FM. And to give you guys something different, give you guys a look at the save, how everything is going for the season. So I'm going to leave it there, though. Uh, definitely going to have videos every single day. This is going to be my main focus on the channel now. So hopefully you are enjoying the series. A lot more to come, definitely. And I'll see you guys next time.